Alright guys, this third and final method of calculating the empirical formula uh, will be done by indirect analysis and this is the hardest one of the three. That's why I saved it for last. I mean it is rough. Okay. Um, now, I want to try my best to explain this to you so if you have to watch the video over and over and over and over. Okay. Now, in the beginning, they tell us that they've got a sample, and this sample is made up of three elements. It's made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They tell us they burned it in pure oxygen, and that 1.039 grams of CO2 and 0 0.6369 grams of water were obtained. That means they were produced. So basically what they're saying is this, they're saying that they took some compound, I'm sorry I'm using a smaller pen but I have to because there's going to be a lot of writing. Uh, they took some compound that's made up of uh, CX, the X representing some number, uh, hydrogen, Y representing some number, and oxygen, and Z representing some number. So they've got some type of uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen compound here that they have 0 0.5438 grams worth and they burned it so therefore they need air to burn it so they burned it we're just going to write a combustion reaction and their products were Cl2 and water now, we don't have to worry about balance it because we're just looking at the thought process here. Now, they told us that they made, they obtained uh, 1.039 grams of CO2. And they told us that they also obtained 0 0.6369 grams of water. They want us to calculate the empirical formula of this. We could almost do it if we knew the oxygen contents. Now, uh, there may be more than just one way to work this problem, but um, I want to show you the way that uh, I know how to work it, and um, I hope that's good enough. Now, if you notice, we've got some problems. You've got oxygen in every aspect of this problem. That's why we're going to save it for last. What we're going to do is we're going to find out how many carbons in grams we can get out of this and how many in grams of hydrogen we can get out of this. The reason why I'm going to do that is this. If I can figure out how many hydrogens in grams are here and how many carbon there are in grams here then that helps me find these missing two pieces here. Because notice that hydrogen is not on the uh, O2 here. Neither is the carbon. So therefore I can just subtract what I end up having from these two in total carbon and oxygen from this guy. So let's get started. Alright, this is going to be a long problem. <laughs> let's go ahead and try to find um, let's find uh, grams of carbon first, okay? So let's do that first. You could do the hydrogen first, but I'm going to find the carbon first. Uh, we were given 1.039 grams of CO2. Okay, I'm going to put that over 1. Okay, my next step is to find the molar mass of CO2. We did this earlier. You know, there's one carbon, so that's 12.01 and 32, because that's 16 and 16. Add those together, and you get 44.01 grams of CO2. That's the molar mass. That's in one mole of CO2. i got to find grams of carbon, so I'm going to keep on going. Okay, in one mole of CO2 there are one mole of carbon because carbon only has a one behind it. So I gotta keep going. Okay. Here I know that in one mole 
of carbon, there is 12.01 grams of carbon. And I got that off the periodic table. Now when I did that, I ended up getting on the calculator, let's see what we get. I ended up getting uh, 1.039 times 12.01 divided by 44.01 and I got to keep four sig figs so I end up getting 0 0.2835 grams of carbon so I've got that one so far okay now I need to do this for the hydrogen okay I was given uh, now we got to find uh, grams of hydrogen. Okay, that's my next step. I write down 0 0.6369 grams of H2O and I find that. Well, I know that the molar mass of water is 18.02 because that's uh, 1.0, 1.0, and 16 add up to 18.02 for the molar mass. So that's going to be grams of H2O, and I know that that's molar mass of that, so that's one mole of H2O. Okay, keep going. I know that in one mole of water, there are two moles of hydrogen. Now, I got to keep going. Okay. I might have to switch to a pencil real quick. I think this is actually running out. Okay. Um, I hope you can see that. That's not as dark either. All right, we're going to squeak by with a, a Sharpie. <laughs> now, I know that if this is two moles of H2, I know that in one mole of, excuse me, this is two moles of H, that in one mole of H, the molar mass is. 1.01 .01 grams hydrogen. Now, equals, I'll put these into the calculator. I've got 0 0.6369 times 2 times 1.01. .01. I get that number. Then I'm going to divide that number by 18.02. Alright, so I finally get this. Okay. I get I need to keep uh, four sig figs, so that gives me 0 0.07140, and that would be grams of hydrogen. Okay. Now, it looks like I'm almost done. <laughs> I've got how many grams of hydrogen there are, I've got how many grams of carbon there are. What I need to do now is I need to add these two together and subtract it from that. So basically I want to take uh, 0 0.5438, which is grams of that CXHYOZ thing, and I'm going to subtract those two numbers. And see what we get. Up getting a uh, point five four three eight minus point zero oh, minus point two eight three five minus point zero seven one four oh I end up getting zero point one eight eight nine. Now remember that's going to be grams of Oxygen. So squeeze that in grams of O. Now, why is this significant? Well, now I can do the problem. I did all this just to get this. Those remember those columns that we did? Yeah, I did all that work just to get that. Okay. So in carbon, I now know that I've got uh, 0 0.2835 grams. In hydrogen, I know I've got uh, 0. Uh, 07140 grams and in this oxygen finally I know I've got 0 
0.1889 grams. Now remember, you got to divide them by their molar masses. I'm going to divide this one by 12.01. Divide this one by 1.01 because I need moles. I'm going to divide that by 16.00. Okay, so we do the math real quick. And that gives me, oh, I'm almost out of space. That gives me uh, 0.2835 divided by 12.01. And I want to keep four numbers still. That'll give me 0 0.0236. Uh, one, and that would be moles of carbon. I'll do the same thing on this one right here. I've got 0 0.07140 divided by 1.01, and that gives me 0. Now, remember, I got to keep, uh, hmm, I should keep four sig figs, I would think, but look at this, that's just three sig figs, so 0. Point uh, zero seven oh seven. There's three sig figs, and it's going to be moles of hydrogen. And the last one, finally, point one eight eight nine divided by sixteen point oh oh, and I get zero point zero one one. I got to keep four sig figs. One one eight one. That's moles of oxygen. Now, let's see which of these is the smallest. Uh, this is uh, 0 0.02, this is 0 0.07, and this is 0 0.01. This 0 0.01 is the smallest. So I'm going to divide them all by this 0 0.01181. So it's going to be 0 0.01181 divided by 0 0.01. 1181 and divided by 0 0.01181 and of course that gives me exactly one oxygen there put this number in uh, I got 0 0.0707 uh, divided by 0 0.01181 and I get 5.986 guess what number that is that number is really just six. So that's going to be six hydrogens. And finally, let's look at the first number. Punch it on the calculator. 0 0.02361 divided by 0 0.01181. And I end up getting 1.999, which is really two. So in carbons, I've got basically two of them. So my final formula then would be uh, C2, uh, since they wanted it, since they mentioned it carbon, since they mentioned it carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, I'm going to write it C2H6O. That's my formula. That is my empirical formula. Look at that. C2H6O. That long to work that problem. Hey, this is a pretty intense problem. Now, watch the video over and over and over and over. Make sure you understand it. If you got questions, come see me and I'll talk to you about it.